So the last video we have talked about how to create a model using the framework manager from your database. So today I instead of going more deep into it I would like to um, you know take a few uh, minutes and describe different types of objects you have uh, in the framework manager. So as you see here at the root we have uh, you know the, the the name of the project and under this you have seen this uh, you see this uh, little square with a bunch of boxes this is called a namespace so what is a namespace namespace is something like a you, know, you can think it represents your entire uh, you know super store of all your objects objects meaning uh, the tables and uh, views and etc etc so this is kind of a namespace so in our particular case we have a test one namespace now in the real life uh, you can define a namespace so for example it could be name of an uh, application uh, or uh, or a sub application let's say if you have an inventory application you can call namespace as inventory where all the inventory related um, you know tables which are basically objects could be there and you can have another uh, which is uh, sort of uh, sales or or in organization uh, anyway so in our particular case or most of the uh, the cognos implementation i have seen is that we have only one namespace which pretty much has or all our uh, tables okay so the next one is you see this this symbol uh, which is uh, kind of you know this three vertical bars uh, and a one horizontal at the top of them this is called a query subject now query subject um, is actually uh, sort of an a represent a table now it could be also a view but um, so for you know call for as far as cognos is concerned uh, instead of uh, calling uh, the similar terms like database and views it call query subjects now query subjects could be a table or a view um, so this is a query subjects so under query subjects you have um, you know query items now query items can you know you can think it are they're close to columns so so each of these are query items now let's click on a query item now each query item they have different uh, you can think you know uh, certain properties involved so the the couple of important properties are one is the data type you know when you create a model uh, using uh, the wizard as as we did here you inherit uh, the underlining uh, table uh, or the column data types so in our particular case this was a uh, you know it was an integer column and by default cognos has put as uh, decimal so you can change it here or you can just leave it like that now the other uh, uh, important was uh, usage now usage here we have identified so if you click here so we have different types of uh, usage. One is identifier, fact, and attribute. So these are the main three which one you need. So for example, all your ID columns, meaning most of them which could be uh, used to represent, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a relation. For example, let's say if you have a uh, agents column and you have an agent ID as a primary key, um, and uh, and maybe uh, in in a sales table if you have a region ID as a as a link between region table and 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 region ID uh, in in let's say this one uh, you know this region ID as you see okay let's say we have okay so we don't have a region ID here but we have let's say quarter ID so quarter ID is a identifier so let's now change this one coming back to going back to agents table um, it is a identifier now name is a attribute attributes name you know typically attributes are typically strings region ID again is a identifier now you have seen a little bit uh, a triangular symbol here which will come to that that these are called uh, regular dimensions and when you go talk about dimensions we'll get there uh, I'm just showing through uh, different types. Then there is another uh, important property called regular aggregate and semi aggregate. So what that means is that let's say for a you know for a fact column. So so let's take a different table cells and then it, we could represent it better. So let's say cells. Now cells we have in the in the cells query subject or table we have ID column 
we have agent ID column again it's a uh, identifier so let's change it to identifier okay we have changed it to identifier then quarter ID this is again an identifier so let's change it to identifier we have sell it now sell it anyone guess so it should be an attribute so attribute you can think it's kind of an information which you want to show it to on a report so if you think uh, so let's say if you think of a report uh, where you are uh, showing the sales amount uh, and the sales and maybe the number of sales done across uh, different regions and uh, and in different quarters so these regions and quarters this could be attribute and the sales amount uh, this could be fact so sales amount is a fact now we are talking about aggregate and semi aggregate so as you see here it says sum and sum what that means is let's say when you are when you are aggregating uh, if you have a report and you are uh, showing all the sales data and you want to um, you want to you know you want to roll up uh, that means let's say you are you know you are displaying in uh, for every region and you want to add all the regions so the way this um, the num the values of sales data would be treated when you aggregate is through sum now what could be the other choices so other choices could be as you see here we can have average we can have count so you, you can think certain situation where you would apply um, count uh, maybe we can get to those things later on but sometimes you know having sum may not make sense so for example if you are if you are uh, showing let's say sell sell date for example right and if you are aggregating this doesn't make sense to add right so in this particular case you would see that we would have regular aggregators unsupported because these columns are 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 uh, can have valid values only when the it is a number types because on number types you, you can add subtract you can count you can average but these are not really possible to do on a string columns like say you know a date column or a, or or attribute like uh, name okay so um, again let's change it to customer id which is identifier all we know we all know that um, okay good so we've got uh, all columns pretty much fixed uh, so i think you've got a good idea about uh, different types of uh, you know different types of columns we have an identifier we have an attribute and we have fact so you may want to group all the identifiers together and so we have nice all identifiers together followed by an attribute followed by a fact column which is a cell amount so let me show you all the uh, tables so here also i am grouping all of them so here we have region we have quarters so here again you see there is something called here you see l l is actually a measure now we'll get to uh, measures maybe on our next video uh, but measure also is something like a um, uh, fact so for example uh, you have uh, uh, you have an a cells uh, you have a sales column you have an inventory column and or inventory query subject and uh, a measure could be an inventory amount so let's uh, group the, let's make them quarter id it's a identifier so we have uh, start and month uh, okay so I think that completes our um, model so now we'll start building few reports but I think before that we have to create something called relation which we'll show in our next video so let's save this project uh, so I've saved this project so in our next video we'll discuss about Cognos uh, how to create relations among different query subjects.